All right, well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody in here. Come on, y'all can tell me that too if you want. <laughs> it's always great. <laughs> hey, I want, I want to ask y'all, speaking of Christmas shopping, don't tell me if you're done yet. Um, I don't want to bring up anything too depressing. Uh, but how many of y'all in here, you're a good rapper? Like, I don't mean like LL Cool J or nothing. I mean, I mean like, boy, that's taking it back. <laughs> oh my gosh, man. <laughs> I just dated myself. Last night I said Jay-Z. I'm like, nah, man, I'm going way back tonight. I don't mean that kind of rapping. I mean, like, you're really good at rapping presents. Anybody in here? Okay, I'm coming to your house. Look, uh, no, but how many of you guys in here, you'd say you're, you're bad at rapping presents? Come on, man, I'm right there with you. Listen, it, I'm so bad at it. Uh, definitely after I wrap a Christmas gift, it, it looks suspicious is what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> Airport security is definitely calling the dogs to search, search my gifts. That's why I love, I love the gift bags. Have you discovered these? Man, the gift bags are awesome because you can throw that gift in there, shove some toilet paper on top of it, you're good to go. Man, I just, I, I, I equate the gift bag up there with the invention of the microwave. It's just like right, right up there with it in my mind anyway. And uh, I heard, I heard, I didn't hear this directly, but I heard last weekend one guy's wife told him, if you buy me one more dumb Christmas gift, I'm going to burn it right in front of your face. <laughs> and you know what he did? He looked, at, he looked at her and said, oh, if you're going to burn it, then I'll buy you a candle. <laughs> Welcome to candlelight services. <laughs> by the way, that dude is very brave and very dumb. Um, I'm just going to tell you right now. And by, uh, also, I got to tell you, if you shop online, most people are doing that now. Uh, you got to be careful. There's so many scams out there online now. I'm telling you, I bought some nice jewelry for Kamani. And you know what came in? Uh, a truck bed cover that fit my truck. <sighs> so weird. We're still trying to figure that one out. We're, we're stumped, right, Kamani? We don't know. We need the word of the Lord is what we need, I'll tell you. Look at this verse, Exodus 15, 18. You'll recognize it because we just sang it. It says, the Lord reigns forever and ever. Now, most of you in here, when we think about the Lord, we get this, right? This is where we can see this, that he's going to reign forever and ever. It resonates with us. And here's the thing. Our faith tends to be futuristic. Like, we tend to have stronger faith out there in the future. Like it's a um, way out there kind of faith. But the big question is, but does he reign now? Does he reign today? Does he reign in my life? And I look at Hebrews 11.1. It says, now faith. Hey, why don't you say the word now? Let's say it again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So again, yes, he reigns forever. But how about now? How about now? The Bible, this gets real personal. In 2 Chronicles 16, 9, this won't be on the screen. But it basically tells us that the eyes of the Lord, think about this, the eyes of the Lord are searching out the earth, looking for those who are fully committed to him. Now, it's not saying that it's looking for someone who might one day, someday be committed, but it's those who are committed right now. And one translation uses the word blameless for committed. And with that, I want to go into the Christmas story because most of us are familiar with Mary and Joseph Look at Isaiah 7, 14. It says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. This is a prophecy about Jesus. The virgin will be with child. By the way, that's a miracle, right? I mean, that is a miracle. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Again, talking about Jesus. But can I talk about Joseph for a little while? Because this brother is kind of overlooked, but... Man, the Bible says that Joseph was a devout man. He was chaste, meaning that he was pure. He was innocent, uncorrupted, blameless. He lived a blame, blameless life. He cared about what God cared about. This is what the Bible says about him. He had a pure heart. In other words, this is the kind of person that God's looking for. Not a perfect person, but a person that's going to quickly make course corrections toward the will of God. 
And that's what the Bible says about Joseph. So Joseph falls in love with Mary. Why? Because she was also blameless and pure in heart. She was a virgin. Her innocence matched his. He loved her. They were a good match. But here's the thing that gets crazy. When Mary ends up pregnant, you got to know this turned Joseph's world totally upside down. I mean, she's pregnant. And here's what, here's what I want you to see in this story or here is that the very thing that brought them together is now the thing that's tearing them apart. And you can read this later, but it's like, how, how can this be possible? In his mind, he's got to be wondering. So he's being blamed probably, but yet he's a blameless person. She's being blamed and she is a blameless person. Think about this, because the Bible says it, that Joseph was a righteous man. Because of that, he wasn't going to try to hurt her or get back at her. He certainly wasn't going to try to embarrass her. But listen, he also was not going to stay with her. He wasn't going to try to expose her, but he wasn't necessarily going to forgive her either. And maybe you've been there in your life. Maybe, I think every Christian, every church is going to face this moment where they have to decide, man, what is going on here? What do I do next? Do I forgive? Do y'all, do y'all know what I'm talking about? I remember years ago, uh, many, many years ago, uh, a good Christian friend of mine that I respected a lot, he was a leader, and he ended up saying some weird things about me. Well, that kind of thing hurts. What happened? And by the way, I love this man, and I respect him today. But back then, what happened was innocence was lost. Probably a lot like what Joseph was thinking was going on, even though we know the truth. Now, maybe we haven't had a moment just like Joseph's, but everybody in here, we're all going to have this moment that makes us want to just slip quietly away from the plan of God. Maybe you're in the middle of that right now. So why was Joseph going to divorce her and even not forgive her? I'll tell you why, because he didn't have Jesus yet. Did you hear me? Yes, he had a great religious upbringing, but he didn't have Jesus yet. It all changed when heaven met him in the form of an angel and splained it to him. You ever had anything splained to you? <laughs> yeah, maybe a talk with your mom. It got splained. Well, this is what happened. And the angel explained all about Jesus, and he got what I call the heavy revy. The revelation of Jesus. He reigns now and forever. And that changed everything. Think about this. The first thing that Jesus saved was his parents' marriage. Brought them back together. And that's a word for a lot of you in here, I think. The very thing that seems to be destroying your faith today is the same thing that Jesus wants to build on in your life. It's a conflict. It's a relational problem. Something at work financial, something that seems so out of whack. Jesus says, okay, it's tearing you apart. I want to build on that. When you get the revelation Joseph got, I've heard this quote before. I love it. Before God does something for you, he always does something in you. Oh, by the way, you never hear from Joseph again. Not really. Why? Because you don't have to. Because all the concerns of this brother's life melted away in that moment after knowing Jesus reigns in me today and forever. Now, they still face storms. A lot of you know this story. They had, they had to run to Egypt. They were running from the king because the king was trying to kill, kill Jesus. I think it's very interesting. As Joseph was going through this persecution, Later on in Jesus' adult life, he said this. It's in Matthew 5, also in other places. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. In other words, they're doing what God wants. They're taking a stand for righteousness. They're persecuted because of it. And they are blessed. God calls you blessed. This is very interesting because Joseph, he was certainly getting persecuted, getting pushed around. But all it did was make him stronger. Can I just say that many of us need to learn how to stand, stand on the word of God, stand on the promise of God in the middle of our storms as well? We need to learn that. Amen? I was reading about this, and you probably know this too, but the University of Arizona, they had this experiment called the Biodome. You ever heard of that? 
the biodome. Okay, good. I see you're very well read. <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't know about it either. But the biodome, they have all these trees they planted in there and a perfect environment, perfect soil for the trees, perfect temperature, no harmful insects. And, and they were all the trees were growing and looked good. They were green and looked strong on the outside. But when they grew up, they just fell over. And scientists were baffled and they, they were confused because they saw that the roots, the roots of these trees didn't go down very deep. And one nerdy scientist finally figured it out. He said, wait, 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 wait. There's no wind in this dome. Therefore, the roots don't have to go very deep. Some of you, listen, because here's the, here's the point. For a tree to be strong, it has to have something pushing it around a little bit to make the roots grow deep. Some of you are like that tree. Some of you right now, you're being pushed around by the world. You're being pushed around. You're trying to hang on. Listen, you know what I tell you? Let your roots, your roots grow deep in what? In Christ. Look at this verse. Colossians 2, 7 says, have your roots planted deep in where? In who? In who? This is it. This is what Joseph learned. Have your roots planted deep in Christ. Let it, let it grow deeper. So, I mean, honestly, I kind of want to celebrate right now. I mean, we see the world getting darker. That's okay. In a dark and dark, dark, darker world, guess what? His light just shines more and more and more. The light is always more noticeable in the dark. Am I right? So I kind of want to celebrate. I'm happy. I'm glad. I can't wait to see what the church is going to do in the future because we're going to be the only place where people can find hope. Jesus. Can I get a better amen than that? And I will admit that being a believer right now, it's getting difficult at times. It is pushing us around sometimes, but that's okay. This wind that is blowing is only making us stronger. That's what's happening. His name is Emmanuel. God with us. Not God with us someday, though. Nope. God now. Is he God with you? Is he God with you today? Meaning, are you at the pinnacle of your relationship with God right now? It's a great question to ask yourself. One more verse, Isaiah 9, 6. And this is another one we just sang together. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace, your peace. He says, I want to give you my peace. It can be yours. This is Jesus we're talking about. Jesus. He will reign forever and ever, yes. But does he reign now, today? You know, I've been praying for each of us, each of you, that you wouldn't see Christmas as a holiday but as a miracle that's trying to chase you down and trying to reach your life today. Can I pray for you? Would you bow your heads in this room? Lord, I thank you so much. Jesus, I thank you that you came to the earth because of us, because of me. Lord, we praise your name, Lord. We continue to lift you up. Lord, I just am so blown away by your mercy and your grace. God, I pray for anyone in here who's not at the pinnacle, the peak of their relationship with you. Would you please move into their life? Hey, if you're in this room, would you just give the Lord permission to do that? Because listen, he's waiting on you. It's not the other way around. The Holy Spirit may be tugging at your heart. And by the way, when that happens, when you feel conviction for the Holy Spirit, don't resist. Run to God. You're not guaranteed you'll always feel that. But right now, if that's you, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to point you out or anything like that. But if you, if you need Jesus, the one who came, the one who gave his life for you, if you need him to forgive you, to be the Lord of your life, not just Savior, but you want to give him permission to come in and, and do a new work. Listen, some of you have been Christians maybe for 25, 30, 40 years, and you think, man, yeah, I've been a Christian a long time, but it's been one year of experience repeated over and over and over again, and God is saying, I've got something new for you. It's time to let me do something new. If that's you or you've never known the Lord at all, 
just pray something like this, that he can hear you and be sincere. Lord, forgive me. First of all, I need you to save me. I'm a sinner. I've done some things and I've been running from you. I don't want to do that anymore. Come on, just do heavenly business with him. But I also need you to be my Lord. Come into my life. Rearrange, rearrange whatever you want to. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Get me connected into the body of Christ because I want to follow after you all the days of my life. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Can everybody say amen together? Can you give God a hand as well? Come on. He's good.